Culture Bank. Thank you to Nanit and Rami for giving me this opportunity to be amongst all of you, to share some of the insights into the thinking of the new government. We'll be completing two years, three days from now. And it's a time both for reflection and a time for us to plan for the future. Particularly since when we came in, there were a number of issues that were grappling the Indian economy, the people of India. And in some sense, and I'm often asked, what is it that you would call the single most important achievement of two years of this government? I feel that the fact that we have been able to change the mindset of the people of India, the fact that the pessimism and cynicism that was evident at one point of time, two, three, four years ago, that mood is changing into the mood of optimism, into the mood of our own confidence that we can do it, we can make a difference, we can change the way work is done in India. I think that change in mindset has been probably one of the single largest focus and achievements of this government in the last two years. Very often uh, we hear from the crown stories like we're not seeing action, we're not seeing a difference at the at the crown in doing our business and making our profits better. And in that sense, the one guiding principle, primary guiding principle that Prime Minister Modi had articulated when we came to government was that this government will not work for the short term. It would have been very easy for us to look at a three, four year horizon plan for the next election in 2019. In any case, elections in India are held every six months. So we are always in a perpetual election mode in, in normal course. But it was decided that we will focus on the long-term agenda of the country. And in some sense, it was very akin to building a skyscraper as against a small building. If you, if you want to just build a three or four story building, you really don't need to go deep. Your foundation can be quite reasonably small. And you can make three or four, five story building on top of that. And be satisfied you've done a good job and you've done it very fast. We decided that what the country really needed was a strong foundation on which the country can go forward for several decades. And in that sense, the first two years were focused largely on attempting to clean the mark, to really dig deep in, to create a solid foundation. And digging deep, you'll end up picking out a lot of the mark from inside the ground. Planning and designing a foundation which sustains India for several years to come and preparing ourselves for that future where we can look at decades of prosperity, decades of, to my mind, double digit growth in the years ahead. And in that sense, most of the work that we've done in the last two years have been very much foundational in nature. Not that we've not tried to leave, get the benefits to the people, but the work has been more of a foundational in nature. And and all the work has primarily focused on a few principles of good governance that we've tried to articulate, that we've tried to strictly emulate, follow. And before I get into the formal presentation, I'd just like to share a little bit about what we believe are the basic tenets of a good government of, of creating sustainable growth, sustainable well-being for the people of India. And in most of the work that you will see as which has happened in the last two years, you'll see the principles being implemented literally in every aspect of governance. Of course, one principle that Prime Minister had articulated very earlier on was that we will work in partnership with all stakeholders. And in that sense, every action of this government has been in the spirit of partnership taking all stakeholders on board, understanding what the issues on hand are and how it can be a win-win solution for all participants. I may break into some examples just to 
set the context of what I mean by that principle, and they may relate to my ministries, because I would be most comfortable talking about that. But please don't uh, believe that these principles only stand for my departments uh, under my charge. These have been all encompassing principles on which we have run this government. And in some sense, the Ujjwal Discom Assurance Yojana, Uday, which we had launched, probably the most comprehensive set of reforms in the power sector, is one shining example of Team India. Every stakeholder in the system, bankers, state governments, power distribution companies, consumer organizations, generating companies, transmission companies, everybody working together to create a win-win solution which can hold the country in good stead for years and years to come. Of course, no organization, no government can be successful unless it has a very decisive leadership. And in that sense, uh, nobody can complain that Prime Minister Modi and his uh, government has not written the bullet on more occasions than one to set things right and has been very, very firm in its decisions. I know on many occasions in the cabinet we are taking a decision and then there are many voices which seem to suggest that, look, politically this decision is not going to be going out well. And, I, and then there's an election around the corner, so we're taking a decision on a subject. Could it impact the impending election very soon after? But the message has been very clear, that this government will stay the course and not work election to election. We will work on principle of ensuring that what we are doing is in the interests of the people of India in the long term. And that decisive leadership is a marked change from what we had seen in the past for seven years. Every action in government usually used to be budget driven, outlet driven. What we've tried to do is change the context and make it more outcome oriented. And I think that has helped us achieve some excellent results about which I'll just shortly uh, talk, to, talk about. But clearly the effort is that every action of the government should be outcome driven, should have its target, its goals very clearly articulated and focus on what's going to happen at the conclusion of the program. Almost every decision we've taken has been on the basis of a thorough root cause analysis. It's not that somebody comes to me and says that, look, this is my problem and can you help me sort it out? In the good old days, the problem could be sorted out, sometimes even with extraneous considerations. In today's government of India, A, is complete transparency, we are looking at a corruption-free India and we are focused on ensuring that all the decisions that we take are after assessing the problem in its entirety. If it needs a policy reset, a policy change, that's what will be done. But an individual case will not be addressed. If, if somebody has a problem about a license, we are not going to land up sorting out his problem and giving him a license. We are going to ensure that the policy or the procedure is simplified or made an equal opportunity for all so that everybody can benefit rather than one or two cases were being done because they have access to the top. And in that sense, if any of you come to India today, you will find the corridors of power all empty. There is nobody roaming around the corridors of government anymore. They are not welcome, they don't need to come there. All they need to do is write in an email and have the process take over, do a root cause analysis, either find a solution if your case merits one, for everybody equally, or write back to you and say, sorry, your case is not in the right spirit, it is not in the spirit of the policy or procedure that we have. Of course, uh, the rule of law and transparency has been the hallmark of this government. We focus very much on sharing all the decisions of the government with a great deal of transparency, to the extent that uh, we almost give a report card on a daily basis through mobile apps on a lot of the action, a lot of the work that's happening. Going back to Uday, when we finalized the agreements with each state and the state is gone. Usually it would be a document in the files because governments were very worried about the people of India monitoring our work. 
this time around, all of that is put into public domain. We would actually ideally like the people of India, we would like all of you to monitor the performance of this government, hold us accountable to what we say we will do. And I think that accountability and monitoring is what differentiates this government from what was happening in the past. Of course, uh, unless there's time-bound uh, execution of work and faster dispute resolution, it's going to be very difficult to get the gains of all of these other activities. You'll see that we very recently come out with a new arbitration law, we focus on the bankruptcy law. We are very focused on trying to make business easier, both the entry and exit easier, making sure that bankers and secured creditors are well protected, taken care of. And in some sense, we prioritized what needed to be done for so many years or the backlog of development, backlog of setting the agenda right. Using technology in big measure, using innovative financing models. And therefore, today, we feel quite empowered to say that our country is changing and it's changing for the better. And in the, the tagline for this two year conclusion of this government is Desh Badal Raha, Desh Aage Bad Raha hai. Desh Badal Raha. Our country is moving forward, our country is changing for the better. And in that sense, some of what I'll talk about today reflect on what has happened in the last two years, what we've been able to do. Here I'm only trying to encapsulate the various aspects that I'll be talking about in this presentation. And uh, one stark reality that I think all of us in this room know is that today India has positioned itself right on top. If one was to look at economic growth, probably the fastest growing economy in the world today, large economy. And I see that happening now for a very, very long time. And I, I have no hesitation in saying that I'm very, very confident if this monsoon goes well, we'll cross 8% in the current year itself, possibly double digit by next year. And going forward, we are creating the foundation for decades of double digit growth in this country. And that's the development backlog that we want to fulfill. Similarly, if I was to, let's say, recall what happened in the COP21 negotiations in Paris. This time around, India played a leadership role, a pole position, during the negotiations for the Paris framework. And I myself was there with the Prime Minister when we were there for the inaugural. And I could sense the vibrancy in the entire negotiations discussions and the huge respect that Prime Minister Modi got, the, the amount of uh, visibility during all the negotiations that India got and the fact that India was able to set the agenda within the Paris framework to protect the interests of the developing world, particularly the addition of sustainable, life, uh, sustainable lifestyles into the Paris talk. Of course, we've also been the number one destination for FDI last year with $63 billion coming into the country. And the approach has been that our reform shouldn't be incremented, it should be transformative. And in that sense, the reform to transform approach has helped us clock 7.65% GDP growth last year amidst the global slowdown. And several new initiatives, the Make in India initiative, Skill India initiative, the Financial Inclusion Program, Chandan Yojana, the Mudra Yojana, the, way, the program by which we hope to help small businesses, new entrepreneurs, get easy availability of finance. All of these programs have helped take the economy forward, help reach the benefits of growth to the people of India. As I mentioned, we have about $63 billion last year in terms of FDI. And in some sense, I'd like to share with you how in many sectors, in many aspects, this year, 2015-16, has been a year of highs. We've had the highest fertilizer, urea production this year. Never before in India did we reach that level of production. We've had the highest ethanol production this time around in the last year. 
highest number of gas connections, LPG gas connections, given to people, particularly the rural poor, and that has a huge impact on the environment and the health of the people. Coal production and electricity generation have been the highest ever in the history of India. Cargo handled by major ports, the new the, the turnaround time, time in each of the ports, all of these are aspects which were never seen before in the country. Software exports went up to the highest level. Roads has been a huge success in the country. And we've been able to expand the, and speed up the expansion of road, road network at a scorching pace. We possibly have awarded 10,000 roads. That's for $1.5 million worth of uh, road contracts in the last year. And I would suspect going forward, this is only going to multiply much faster. It's also been a government of firsts. Many things which had never happened in India before have happened this time now. So 210 million people for the first time got connected to the banking infrastructure. And we've truly been able to bank the unbanked. People for seven decades who had no state, no possibility of participating in the financial architecture of the country are now today having bank accounts, are, tra are working through the bank accounts. Nearly 60-70% of these accounts are regularly operating accounts and it will take some more time for the rest of the people to get used to working through the banking system. Various programs of social security, getting subsidies into people's bank account rather than giving it away in a very inefficient manner through pricing. And about $9.2 billion given out as subsidies, this is only the beginning. The idea is that all subsidies move into the direct benefit transfer mode. Huge effort on cleaning up India, making sure open defecation and problems of unavailability of sanitation, all of these are addressed for the first time in India. And you'll be delighted to know India has moved up the global rankings in terms of our LED consumption from 0.1% two years ago to 12% last year. That's the transformational change. And a government company which used to give 600,000 LED bulbs, sell them two years ago, last year sold 90 million bulbs, making India transform its energy efficiency program such that by 2019, just one LED expansion program will save $6 billion in consumer bills, will reduce our peak load demand by about 22 gigawatt, and more importantly, will help us reduce carbon footprint, the greenhouse gases, by about 80 million tons every year. So it's been a year where we've done a number of firsts, but while doing all of this, the most important element has been the unprecedented transparency in the entire system. We are all well aware of the problems we've had with the coal block allocations, which earlier used to be given away free of charge, without due process, without equal opportunity for all. We've been able to set the entire process right. It's now auctioned. Everybody has an equal opportunity and a fair value determined which revenue goes to serve the people of India, help us in our development objectives. Similarly, on Spectrum, India had faced a huge scam. All of those days are over. We've set the agenda, we've set the roadmap that all of India's natural resources will be available for everybody on an equal opportunity basis through a fair process, transparent process, and the revenues will go to serve the people of India days of crony capitalism are completely gone. Subsidies I already mentioned to you have started being given directly. And there were a number of long pending issues accumulated over the years which we've been able to address and will continue to address in the days to come. Of course, toilets was a big problem. Many schools in the country, nearly 400,000 toilets were built in schools for boys and girls within a short span of 12 months so that every school in the country has a separate toilet for boys and girls. And then there were several other programs that were initiated during the course of the year. In fact, uh, about a year ago, 
there were 18,452 villages which still did not have power, almost seven decades after India became independent. And it was a matter of shame for all of us that these villages, there were certainly difficult villages. Some of them are in left wing, extremist infested areas or in the deep jungles, forests, top of mountains. But it, 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 felt it was our duty to ensure that every village in the country gets connected and gets the benefit of power. And we embarked on that program on a mission mode. Prime Minister announced a target of 1st of May 2018 to reach electricity to every village in the country. We are confident of doing it by one year ahead of schedule by 1st of May 2017. Similarly, we have decided that we get power for every citizen in the country 24 by 7. Electricity should be available by 2022. We are confident of doing that three years ahead of schedule and are working towards making that happen by 2019. Several other small issues, big issues, all of them which we inherited as a legacy have been a focus area. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be available for everybody, and I need not go through many things. There was a land boundary dispute with Bangladesh, 40 year old, we were able to resolve. Yeah. There was a hydropower project in the northeast, very geopolitically sensitive state of Sikkim, which had been languishing after 90% of the work was done. Almost $2 billion invested and got mired in controversies. Five international investors, I don't know, some of them may be in the room today, were invested in that company and stuck. They were fighting with the state government, with the developer, promoter, EPC contractor, lenders. The entire mess was leading to a $2 billion investment at a 90% in the completed project stuck in controversy. We were able to sit down across the table over three or four sittings, some of them going as long as eight, eight hours, but making sure that everybody benefits and a win-win solution can solve that problem. So it's been a period where we've tried to bring all the past behind us, get the past behind us and move forward. Of course, uh, empowerment for the poor is an integral part of our agenda. India cannot develop, India cannot prosper unless all of its people come out of poverty. And this government is committed to ensuring that every person in the country has a decent home, a decent education, quality health care, ensure that he gets financial literacy, ensure that he's a part of the mainstream development activities of the country and several initiatives which will take the people forward, help them improve their lives, skill the youth of India, make them independent, make them employable, help them create self-employment opportunities. All of these various programs that we have enunciated in the last two years, uh, the program by which we are hoping to take road to every village in the country, electricity to every village in the country, guaranteed health care for the poor, ensuring that the ladies, particularly in rural India, who still use wood or primitive means of cooking, get LPG gas connections, skilling, which is one of the major focuses of this government. And later in the day, I'm going to visit the ITE, in Singapore, which is a world-renowned skilling center. I'm hoping to learn from their experience, from the activities happening there, and take it to India and expand our skilling activities also in India. The entire focus is make each individual independent and self-reliant. Farmers has been a major focus area of this government. Usually, Farming was always only taken as a year-on-year -year activity. Good monsoon, you do well, bad monsoon, you're in trouble. And we ourselves have faced three years of cloud in the last three years. We're working very actively to ensure that they get compensated for the losses they often suffer, ensuring universal insurance for the farmers, ensuring greater production of milk, greater production of fisheries or expanding the fishery network, expanding irrigation, which 
that more and more people get out of the uh, stress of monsoon affecting their produce. The entire idea is to promote farming to become a profitable enterprise. And we have committed ourselves to doubling farmers' income in the next five years. Of course, we've done a lot of activities for promoting entrepreneurship, as I said, the Mitra Yojana, where small entrepreneurs can get up to about $15,000 to help them start a small business, maybe even a small vending business, a small shop, a taxi, small activities which create self-employment opportunities. And the Standard Startup India, Standup India program to help entrepreneurship in the country. The girl child has been a major focus of this government. And the health of women and children are areas which, while they may not interest possibly the Deutsche Bank Investors Conference, but for us back home in India, are extremely important for the future of our nation, for the future of our people. So we do believe a healthy child, a healthy woman, a well-educated child is going to be the backbone of a developed India, of a prosperous India in the years ahead. I've already mentioned to you about how we are moving all subsidies through the direct benefit transfer so that leakages and subsidies can be done away with. We are trying to make it easier to work in India, trying to make it easier to get jobs in India, ensuring quality standards in all the work that we are doing. Of course, infrastructure building has been the prime focus of this government, not only because it helps us prepare for a better future, but also because it helps us create jobs, also because it helps us move goods, helps us make the Make in India program more successful. And uh, my colleague, Minister Mr. Nitin Gadkari, whom I would rate as possibly one of the finest ministers that the Indian government has ever seen, has really been very, very successful in his massive trust on highway and road construction, massive trust on building up the maritime infrastructure of the nation, our efforts to turn around the aviation business. All of these are areas which we believe will prepare India for a better future going forward. I already talked about the Mission Road project to electrify the final few most difficult villages in the country. And I'm very confident we've already done about 42%. Very confident we'll complete the entire village electrification in the next year or so. In terms of uh, technology and connecting the people with Digital India, we are focused on ensuring that every Indian in the country gets connected through technology, through the internet, and enjoys the benefit of both knowledge that the internet and that technology can give them, and also the fact that they can enjoy benefits of the government directly through the use of the web, through the use of social media, through the use of the uh, IT infrastructure that we are creating in a big measure. Of course, telecom and electronics manufacturing is another large area of our focus where we are trying to attract new investment in the country. Even for solar producers, we are coming out with a new policy for electronics manufacturing to support and encourage manufacturing in India. The judicial system has gone through several stresses. There is a huge backlog in India. We are working with the judiciary. We brought in the Arbitration Act, as I mentioned earlier, the Bankruptcy Court, the Commercial Courts Act to fast-track commercial disputes. All of these efforts try and make the judicial system more responsive to what is needed by the people, by the, by the litigants. I've already talked about the court law allotment being made completely transparent and equal opportunity. Many of you may be aware that today India is a power surplus country. From what are the days that India was considered to always be deficient in power? We now have, uh, we've added about 46 gigawatts of uh, power, traditional thermal power uh, in the last two years. We are now focused on a massive renewable energy program, probably the largest initiative being undertaken anywhere in the world. And we'll take our renewable energy to 175,000 megawatts 
175 gigawatts by 2022. 100 gigawatts of solar alone. I spoke about having only to mention that this time around, India has decided to lead from the front, not only follow what the world is doing. We are creating our own GPS mechanisms, our GPS technology, and all of these, in a way, culminate in, a, in several of the path-breaking initiatives that we've taken. Uh, while, of course, as I mentioned, we've had huge growth in FDI, or the ease of doing business has improved significantly. The corruption index perception of uh, honesty and transparency in our working has improved significantly. But the big picture story is, and, and this speaks about the Stand Up India, Startup India, Stand Up India, and what incentives we are giving to our youth to get connected with, with new entrepreneurship, with new businesses. But the, and, and Skill India, I already mentioned to you, is a big focus because we believe people need to be empowered to stand up on their, on their own feet. But our whole focus and effort is to prepare India and every Indian to be ready for the challenges of tomorrow, to make India truly emerge as an economic and social superpower and give business opportunities to the rest of the world. India today is the one country which has a billion plus aspiring citizens aspiring for a better quality of life. And in that sense, the market opportunity, the business opportunity that India provides today, and the fact that you can have a fair business opportunity equal to, equal for all stakeholders, is the proposition that I'd like to make before you. I invite all of you to come to India. I invite all of you to look at India fresh. I invite all of you to look at investments in India manufacturing in India, services sector in India. To my mind, India is open for business, India is open for all of you. Thank you very much. So I think that's, a, that's something which we in business recognize. 
but by and large our government has found no difficulty and a large part of it is because the people even at the states and the leadership at the state level they may be of different political views different political ideology but they all recognize one fact that this prime minister means business when he says something he delivers he is honest about it if he wants to tell you he is not going to do something he says it up front he doesn't beat around the bush that decisive leadership is what is the differentiating factor where states also trust this guy and i don't think there will be any problem for us to implement our agenda even for the states thank you ladies and gentlemen Thank you very much, Minister Goyal, for this very interesting keynote session.